Hello and welcome to History Insight. In today's video, we will be discussing the incredible story of what really happened between the Mongols and Samurais. The people of Tsushima Island in Japan noticed them first, the dark figures on the horizon as they cut across the Pacific Ocean one evening in 1274. Governor Sosuka Kuni knew what was coming and rallied 80 mounted samurai to lead them through the mountains towards the beach. The invasion fleet was approaching and the samurai were outnumbered. Six years earlier, Kublai Khan, the Mongol ruler and grandson of Genghis Khan, had sent a letter to Japan's Kamakura government, offering to peacefully submit to his rule and become subjects of the Mongols. However, Japan's government ignored the letter and now Tsushima was suffering the consequences. At dawn, a thousand Mongols charged the beach, and though the samurai were skilled with the blade, they were primarily horse archers. The Japanese fought in small, disparate bands of samurai warriors and their followers, preferring to pick off individual targets at range. This worked initially against the Mongols, but their tactics were foreign and overwhelming. Trained in horse archery since childhood, the Mongols launched synchronized charges in units, raining down volleys of arrows on clumps of enemies. When the enemy began to thin, they charged the gaps and looked to finish the battle. The samurai's mastery of both grappling on horseback and unmounted sword warfare became crucial in the melee. However, they were outnumbered and by midday, the Mongol invasion of Tsushima was unstoppable. Local buildings were burned and the inhabitants slaughtered. The Mongols did the same to the island of Aiki before advancing towards the mainland. When the fleet came into view and dropped anchor, it revealed the Mongol flair for psychological warfare. Their bows were adorned with female islanders dangling from a rope strung through their palms. The Mongols charged the beach to the sound of gongs and drums, launching ear-splitting gunpowder bombs and swinging hooks and other weapons to rip the Japanese from their mounts. The Mongols generally wore versatile light armor and carried personal shields, while the heavily armored samurai only used shields as stationary protective walls for their archers. The samurai were relentless sharpshooters, and their counterattacks forced some of the Mongols to retreat and regroup. One samurai, Takazaki Sunaga, was eager to make a name for himself and charged the Mongols, but was thrown from his horse and injured. He was saved by a charge of reinforcements, but the Mongols were ultimately victorious, and Japan was forced to sign a treaty recognizing Mongol authority. Despite the treaty, the Mongols continued to press their advantage and launched a second invasion of Japan in 1281. This time, they came with a fleet of over 4,000 ships and an estimated 140,000 soldiers. The Japanese were better prepared and had strengthened their defenses. They also employed a new tactic, known as the Divine Wind, or kamikaze, in which they used typhoons to their advantage to destroy the Mongol fleet. The typhoon believed by the Japanese to be a divine wind sent by their gods sank or damaged a large portion of the Mongol fleet, forcing them to retreat. The Mongols suffered heavy losses and were unable to mount another invasion of Japan. The failed invasions had a profound impact on Japanese society and the samurai code of honor. The samurai, who had previously been an elite warrior class, began to see themselves as the protectors of Japan and its people. They also developed a greater appreciation for the value of unity and cooperation, as they had learned the hard way that they could not defeat the Mongols on their own. The invasions also led to the development of a strong isolationist policy in Japan, as the country sought to protect itself from future threats. After the failed invasions of Japan, the Mongols turned their attention elsewhere, expanding their empire and consolidating their power. Kublai Khan, who had inherited the throne of the Mongol Empire upon the death of his brother, Mon Khan, in 1259, established the Yuan Dynasty in China in 1271. He moved the capital of the Mongol Empire to Beijing and worked to integrate the conquered Chinese territories into the Mongol Empire, adopting many Chinese cultural practices and institutions. He also sought to spread the Mongol way of life and Buddhism throughout the empire. During his reign, Kublai Khan was a patron of the arts and encouraged the development of literature, painting, and other forms of artistic expression. He also implemented various administrative and economic reforms, including the establishment of a standardized currency and a system of postal roads. 
Despite his efforts to bring stability and prosperity to the empire, Kublai Khan faced various challenges, including revolts and resistance from conquered peoples. He also struggled with the increasing cost of maintaining a large, far-flung empire and the challenges of governing such a diverse and populous territory. Kublai Khan died in 1294, and his death marked the end of the Yuan dynasty's expansion and the beginning of its decline. The empire faced numerous challenges in the following decades, including natural disasters, economic difficulties, and internal conflict. In 1368, the Ming Dynasty, a Chinese dynasty that had emerged in the wake of the Mongol Empire, took control of China and the Mongols retreated to their homeland in the steppes of Central Asia. Despite its eventual decline, the Mongol Empire remains one of the most significant and influential empires in history, leaving a lasting impact on the regions it conquered and on the world as a whole. The legacy of the Mongol Empire can still be seen in the modern world in various ways. The Mongols' expansion and conquests had a significant impact on the spread of culture, religion, and technology throughout Asia and Europe. The Mongols were known for their religious tolerance and their willingness to adopt and adapt the customs and practices of the peoples they conquered. They also played a key role in the transmission of knowledge and ideas between East and West, facilitating the exchange of technology, science, and artistic expression. The Mongols established diplomatic and commercial relationships with various states and played a significant role in the development of the Silk Road, a network of trade routes that linked Asia, Europe, and the Middle East. In addition to their impact on culture and trade, the Mongols also left a lasting mark on military history. The Mongol Empire was known for its highly organized and effective military machine, which relied on a combination of cavalry and archers. The Mongols' use of horseback archery and their ability to fight on foot made them formidable opponents, and they were able to conquer and control a vast territory that stretched from the Pacific Ocean to the Mediterranean Sea. The Mongols' military tactics and strategies were studied and admired by military leaders throughout history, and their legacy can still be seen in the modern world. Despite the many achievements of the Mongol Empire, it is also remembered for its brutal tactics and the widespread destruction and loss of life that accompanied its conquests. The Mongols were known for their use of mass slaughter and indiscriminate killing as a means of terrorizing and subjugating conquered peoples. The legacy of the Mongol Empire is a complex one, reflecting both its great achievements and its sometimes devastating impact on the world. After the fall of the Mongol Empire, the Mongols retreated to their homeland in the steppes of Central Asia and established new states and empires. One of the most notable of these was the Golden Horde, a Mongol state that controlled much of Russia, Eastern Europe, and the Caucasus region. The Golden Horde was founded by Genghis Khan's grandson, Badu Khan, and became a major power in Eastern Europe and the Middle East. The Mongols of the Golden Horde maintained a strong military and imposed their rule on the territories they controlled, but they also adopted many of the customs and traditions of the peoples they conquered and established a system of governance that allowed for a degree of local autonomy. The Mongols of the Golden Horde were known for their trade and diplomatic relations with various European states, and they played a significant role in the development of the Silk Road. They also supported the spread of Islam in their territories and played a key role in the transmission of knowledge and ideas between East and West. Despite their military and economic power, the Mongols of the Golden Horde eventually lost control of their territories and the state began to decline in the 14th century. Other Mongol states and empires emerged in Central Asia and the Middle East in the aftermath of the Mongol Empire. These included the Chagatai Khanate, the Khanate of Kiva, and the Ilkhanate, which was established in Persia and parts of the Middle East. These states and empires maintained their own cultures, traditions, and systems of governance, but they also inherited many of the legacy of the Mongol Empire, including its military and economic power and its reputation as a world-conquering force. The legacy of the Mongols and their impact on the world continue to be studied and debated by historians and scholars today. Thanks for joining us on History Insight. We hope you enjoyed learning about this incredible history. If you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes, please don't hesitate to reach out. We'll see you in the next one.